Hi everybody, it is me, Corey Summers, your local Los Angeles luxury realtor. Today we're gonna to be discussing the topic of earnest money deposit. So, I want you to stay tuned to the very end because I have a special giveaway for you as well. If you've not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button below and the bell for updates so you can get updated when the next video is released. Hey everybody, it is me, Corey Summers, your local Los Angeles luxury realtor. So we're gonna dive right in to talk about earnest money. When you are purchasing a home and you write an offer and the offer is accepted by the sellers, that's not where the contract is really binding. Consideration has to be exchanged. And in today's economy, consideration is money. Consideration is what binds a contract, right? There's the signatures of both party and then some type of an exchange. Well, that exchange, again, it's money. It's commonly referred to as the earnest money deposit or EMD, sometimes just shortened to a deposit and oftentimes also referred to as the good faith deposit. They all mean the same thing. All four terms are interchangeable. It is that amount of consideration you are putting down in order to purchase this property and bind the contract agreement. Keep in mind this is also done so that sellers know that you're real. A lot is put into preparing a house for sale. Homeowners are often downsizing their material goods, their, their, their things, their decluttering, their organizing, they're cleaning up, maybe they're touching up the home with a new paint job, fixing a couple of things around the home. And in some cases, they're going ahead and redoing the bathroom or, or updating something so that they can sell their home for the most money. They're trying to show their home in the best light possible. And they wanna know that you're serious. And consideration, again, is a part of that contract that shows you are putting something in and that you're serious and it's what's binding this contract together. Some people like to say it's, it's showing that you got some kind of skin in the game. Now, how much should that earnest money deposit be? You might be wondering, right? So in most places, and, and this varies depending on what state you're in and what city you're in, but in most places, it's about three to 5%. Now, let's say you're purchasing a home that's a million dollars. 3% of an earnest money deposit is $30,000. If it's 5%, that's $50,000. Now, of course, this is something you should strategize with with your agent. If you are up against competition, this is one of the areas that I always look at as a way to position my clients to beat out competition. So again, it might be around three to 5%, depends on if you have competition and really strategize this with your agent. Now you might be wondering, how does the earnest money get handled? So first and foremost, again, it's written into your contract, but once the offer is accepted and once both parties have signed, now it's time to actually deliver that earnest money. And how it's delivered depends on the state you're in. So if you are in an attorney state, you'll make a check out, you, you'll hand it off to your agent, or maybe your agent will have you drop it off to the seller's agent's office, and it goes into the seller's agent escrow account. And it stays there until the close of your the purchase and then it's dispersed accordingly. Now, if you are in an escrow state like we are here in Southern California, once the contract has been fully signed, escrow will be open and then escrow will send you the buyer wire instructions to go ahead and send the money into escrow. Again, it sits there until the close where it's dispersed accordingly. Now, some of you might be thinking three to 5% is a lot of money. If we're talking about a million dollar purchase, it's $30,000 or $50,000, and of course, as the price goes up, so does that deposit, right? Well, this is not done blindly without some form of protections. So contingencies are written into your offer to provide that protection, and the first contingency is your inspection period. And this is the time that you're going to have a home inspector come out. Maybe they've identified a couple things and you wanna have a structural inspector out or a fireplace inspector, a roofer, things like that. Maybe there's um, a, an addition onto the house and it appears that it might not be permanent, maybe because there's a discrepancy in title. And so you might wanna go down to the city and see if there were permits pulled. Or maybe you're thinking of converting the garage to an ADU and this is really important to you. Well, during that inspection period, this is when you're gonna go and look into that and make sure that you can convert it. Here in Los Angeles, um, the city of Los Angeles, it, this has been a big thing lately. So it's, it's almost a guarantee, but nothing is truly guaranteed. So taking that extra effort and going and doing that research and legwork with yourself will save you in the long run. So I always recommend that. Now, 
the next contingency is your appraisal contingency. We want to know that the property is going to appraise for the price you're purchasing it, right? You don't want to overpay. And I know for me, I never want my clients to overpay. So that's a, a contingency as well. And then the third contingency is your loan approval. Most people are getting a loan. Now there are some people that are purchasing cash and that's fine. Um, and if you are purchasing cash, then chances are we do not have that as a contingency because if you're purchasing cash, you're not getting a loan. But if you are getting a loan, that is gonna be your final contingency is that loan approval. So you've got three contingencies along the way and all of these protect your deposit. And But here's what's really too important to understand. They protect your deposit in this. If you decide not to purchase the home, you must do so based on those contingencies. So if you decide that you don't wanna purchase the home because the home inspection revealed you know, a couple of things that you're saying, oh, in like 10 years, I'm gonna to have to replace all these things and this is just not worth it to me, then that's when you back out and you back out based on your home inspection. But if you decide a couple of days before closing, you no longer want this house, well, not only is that good faith, um, I'm sorry, the earnest money deposit in jeopardy, the sellers can keep it. So contingencies are something to be very mindful of and your agent will be watching these and reminding you of, of certain things. And, and that's why things like that inspection period and, and meeting those dates is really important. That's why that appraisal is really important and that's why your loan um, approval is very important as well. Now, for some of you, if this is your first time purchasing a home, you might be saying to yourself, where does that earnest money deposit actually go? Well, it's typically applied towards your loan. So let's say you're getting an FHA loan with, with maybe 3% down and you did a 3% earnest money deposit. Well, it's just gonna roll over and be dispersed towards the down payment against your loan. Or let's say you're putting 10% down, then that 3% would again go against the down payment on your loan. But let's say you're doing a VA loan, which is 0% down. Well, that earnest money deposit might be done a little differently. Maybe it's a flat amount that we're gonna do or it still might be a percent. And in that case, that amount would go towards your closing costs. Okay, so it's either gonna go against your down payment on your loan or your closing costs. But either way, that initial deposit goes towards something. It doesn't go to air. It's not extra money that the sellers get to keep. It's just a part of the process. So hopefully this information has been helpful to you. If it's, if it's been a while that since you purchased a home, you might've forgotten about this or you might have had some questions and hopefully I've covered every question you might have. And if this is the, your first time purchasing a home, hopefully this gets you prepared. Now I also have a special guide prepared for you that goes over earnest money deposit and some of these key things to be aware of. And you can get that guide by clicking below. Thank you so much for watching today. If you have not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please go ahead and do so at this time, as well as clicking the bell for updates, and I will see you guys again soon.